Good morning, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. President. Based on 2022 assessment data from the state of Georgia, nearly 60% of third graders are not reading on grade level. My son, colleagues, is one of those third graders. The numbers aren't much better for older kids in Georgia. According to the latest NAEP scores, a nationally norm reading assessment, approximately 68% of fourth and, and eighth graders in Georgia are not proficient readers. Many of these children, including my son, have dyslexia. In fact, about 20% of school children have dyslexia. Colleagues, today is the Dyslexia Day at the Capitol. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about my personal experience as a parent with this disorder. For years, I thought dyslexia, dyslexia was a fairly narrow learning disorder. Essentially, you flip your letters and your, and, and your numbers, which makes it a little challenging to read. This myth is what contributed to my wife and I missing clear signs of the disorder in our very son, very own son. It started in kindergarten and first grade where my wife and I noticed that my son was struggling to learn how to read. But at the time, we attributed it to the pandemic because like many children across Georgia, he was virtual learning for nearly a year. We also figured that he would catch up since he was the youngest in his class and he's a boy and boys tend to be slow learners. But by the second grade, we became worried when after some additional support like tutoring, he continued to struggle and was well below the national average on his reading assessments. It simply did not make sense. He was way too smart in our minds for him to struggle this much with reading. My wife and I decided to get more intensive tutoring from the speech school, the Atlanta speech school, which meant that he needed to be evaluated from a cl by a clinician. It was at that moment our understanding of my son's struggle changed our perspective on dyslexia. The clinician and later an educational psychologist told us that my son had deficits in phonological processing, orthographic processing, retrieval, and working memory. Some of which, by the way, I struggle with myself, but that's a story for another day. The news was shocking to my wife and I, but here's the kicker. The clinician told us that even if we did nothing at all, our son was likely to be just fine. However, his confidence and enjoyment of school were significantly at risk because he was going to have to work twice as hard as other kids to do the same amount of learning academically. That broke our heart. And it immediately had me thinking about all of the kids that go through our school systems each and every day, whether they're private school or public school, that have not been diagnosed or treated for dyslexia. As a result, they are at increased risks for disruptive behavior, not fulfilling their full potential, or even worse, dropping out of school. How many of our students, colleagues, could we have saved had we known that they had dyslexia? Here's the good news. We can fix Georgia's literacy problem and do it without forcing every parent across the state to pay thousands of dollars and spend hours getting their children evaluated. We could also save them from having to spend thousands of dollars in private school instruction, especially with many of these schools having massive wait lists. Given the lack of capacity to diagnose and provide private school seats to address the sheer number of students that need services, we have to systematically change the public school system where 90% of Georgia's students are enrolled. Here are a few things that we have to work on, colleagues. First, we have to change the, our curriculum in K-12 education to align with the science of reading. It may surprise you, but kids today are not learning how to read the same way that you learned how to read. We have to go back to that. We also have to do uh, tweaks, uh, some supports that we provide students, including smaller class sizes and retention for students that continue to struggle to read so they can receive more intensive supports. We need to change the way the university system teaches our teachers how to teach kids how to read because they are also using 
curriculum that is not aligned with the science of reading. And we need to make sure that our parents and our school systems are equip equipped with early warning tools and assessments. And this body has already done, taken steps towards making sure that that's a reality, but we have to make sure that we provide the quality and the resources needed to make those tools effective. And most importantly, we have to engage our parents. Parents are an important piece of this puzzle, and when they get assessment results, we have to equip them with the knowledge and the, and the know-how of what to do when their children are showing signs of a learning disorder. Colleagues, this is Georgia's most solvable crisis, but it's gonna take resources and a sustained investment at every level from the state to local school boards. I look forward to working with each one of you to advance this cause. Georgia's children are counting on us.